Hello and welcome to the Wooly Bee Podcast. This is episode 14 and my name is Sarah. My username on Ravelry is MacAttack and my username on Instagram is Mac08Attack. Today is June 26, 2017 um, and thank you for joining me. This is your first time watching. Thank you for checking me out and I hope you enjoy. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Um, it has been almost six weeks since I last recorded, which is a lot longer than I ever anticipated. So I'm sorry about that. Life, I don't know. I, I don't even know. It just happened. Um, but as usual, I'm coming to you from Virginia. I am back home in Northern Virginia. And this is yet another location if you have been a returning viewer. Um, this is my dining room at home. And the only reason I'm in here instead of outside is because my neighbors are putting on a new deck and there are people and it's weird. Um, but otherwise, it is the most beautiful day ever. It's low 80s. It's slight breeze. It's sunny. There's about zero humidity and it's heaven on earth. Um, if this is what summer was, I would never want the seasons to change. But that is not what summer is here. So we get it for a couple days and then regular summer returns. But until then, I will enjoy every minute. So our windows are over there. Um, which is why half of my face may look brighter than the other half um, and why I may look out that way. That's where the birds and the squirrels and whatever else is out there um, is. Uh, if I move my head, I'm sorry, that's our chandelier. I have it on because it was kind of dark without it, even though this room is pretty bright. But that's what that is. Um, so, yeah, it's been it's been too long. Um but let's jump in with the knitting. So if you are a new viewer, this is a mostly knitting podcast with some cross stitch, very, very rarely some spinning, and really any other crafty things that I'm up to. Um, I also thought it was a really, really smart idea, since I couldn't find any Arnold Palmer in the fridge or iced coffee, to get a can of soda. I don't ever drink soda, but... There's ginger ale, and I wanted it. And then I said, I was like, great, that means you're going to hiccup the whole episode. So, I'm sorry. So, let's jump into finished objects. So, because it's been so long, I have casted on and finished a project without anybody, <laughs> without you guys having, having ever seen it. Unless you follow me on Instagram, where I put it all over the place. So if you do follow me there, you've seen this a lot, and you're probably sick of it. If you haven't seen mine, you've seen everybody else's. Um, I knit, and it's not folded, it's bunched. Um, I knit the Hohi Locatelli Starting Point Mystery Knit Along Project. And I'm too close to the camera. Hang on. And here she is. trying to center it from the holes inside. Um, but this is my wrap. So this is what one half of it looks like. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then the other half looks exactly the same. Um, so this was the mystery project that started back at the beginning of May. I don't remember if I talked about it in the last episode. I don't really remember what I talked about in the last episode, which is usual when you don't write show notes and it's been six weeks. Um, I was really on the fence about jumping in on this because um, it started back at the beginning of May and all you knew ahead of time was that it used five skeins of fingering weight yarn and there was a lot of garter stitch. And I was like, oh lord. I don't know if I can handle that. Um, and the first couple clues came out. It came out over five clues, um, one clue a week. And the first couple clues, I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then I think it was the third clue that came out, and I was like, oh, I do really like that. Um, and I went through a couple different color options um, before I settled on this. Um, I, so I knit this shockingly in about 
three weeks, three and a half. I'd have to, I'm going to try to pull it up because I'm curious. Um, in about three weeks, which is ridiculous because of the yardage. There's a lot of yardage in this, in this wrap. Um, yeah, I knit it. Let's see. I'm so glad Ravelry will tell me these things. Um, yeah, it was just about three and a half weeks that it took me. Um, which is crazy because I used a total of 1,532 yards, I believe, um, which is actually less than anticipated. I think the, I think, um, I think it was mentioned, sorry, I hit the table, that it would be like 1,700 yards, and I didn't use that much. But let me go through my colors. Um, so I used all Miss Babs Yummy 2 ply, which is 100% superwash merino fingering weight yarn. Um, and five different colors. So I don't know how accurate they're going to be, but there are plenty of pictures on my project page on Ravelry if you are interested. But the first color is this one here, and that is called White Peppercorn. It is not a natural color. Um, it is, it reads as white, um, but it is the, I hate to say that it's gray because it's not gray. But there is some variation to it, and it is stunning. Um, it's that perfect neutral when pure white or pure, like, undyed is too much. Because um, it just provides a little softness. Sorry, there goes the chandelier. Uh, just a little softness. Um, so I love that. The second color, color two, this one here. Actually, let me show you on the bigger portion. So my color one for the pattern was white peppercorn. Color two is this one right here, and that is oyster. Um, oyster is one of the many grays that the Miss Babs team does. Um, it is one of the warmer medium to light grays. Um, so that's that. I was gonna go with shale, I believe. I thought shale was gonna work better, um, but shale is a little darker and a lot cooler. And when I put all the colors out, I pulled out all the grays that I had of Babs that were not really dark, like Pewter's really dark. And Quicksilver is light, but it's too cool. And I ended up liking the Oyster with the rest of the colors better than uh, the Shale. I'm going to actually scoot back real quick. Okay. Color three. Ooh, that I don't think that does justice, but see if I get it. Nope, that doesn't. That's a little better. Okay, so color three is this one right here. That is sugar. Um, that is a soft pink. Again, I love sugar. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with it. I've been obsessed with it since I bought this skein of it. Um, because it's a soft pink. And it would be beautiful for baby items if you were doing that, but it's not baby pink. It's sophisticated, it's classic, it's just, ah, I love it. It's so pretty. Um, so sugar. I did end up using just over one skein of sugar. I had to cut into a second skein by about 12 yards, and I'll explain why that happened. Um, but I did need over one skein. Um, this yarn comes in 400 yard skeins and color three was the color that you were expected to use the most of in this project. Um, so I knew when I was picking colors that it was good that I had the extra skein just in case. Um, so I'm glad I did. Color four is this and that may be reading is black. I can't tell, um, but it is navy blue. Um, and it is called denim, and it's it's a great, just true navy. Um, so that's this one here. And then my fifth color is this one, and this is called cumin. Um, I believe it is one of the colors in the on the spice or the spice market gradient set. Um, but I am not certain because I do not have that set, but cumin, um, I got it in a full skein, so I don't know. 
it is a color, it doesn't know what color it is. Um, most of the time it reads as this mossy scummy green, which I think is what the camera is picking up if I'm looking correctly. Sometimes it looks more gold. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what color it is, but I like it with everything else. Um, I originally bought denim and cumin to go together in a two-color shawl, which I think would have been stunning, but then these other colors just fell into place. So I love my colors. I think it's a really classic pairing, which is what I was going for, and I think it will work with a lot of a lot of things when the weather gets cooler, obviously. Um, my other pairings, if you don't follow me on Instagram, one was a neon bright hedgehog pairing, which I think would have been a bit much. Um, and I bought that set of yarn for a different project originally. Um, they were going to go together. They probably will go together, but I bought them with a different project in mind, and I think that other project is better suited for them because they're so bright. Um, and the other set that I had, I did love, and I almost went with, and it was all blues and greens. But ultimately, I think this pairing is better. Um, so let me just go through. So let me talk about needle size. This pattern called for a US 6. I'm going to see what that is because I don't know. I think a four millimeter needle. I dropped down to a five, which is a 3.75 millimeter needle. And that's because, and I even could have dropped to a four and would have been happy. Um, that's because, let me actually put it on real quick, even though it's a little warm for that. But that's because I do not like loose garter stitch. And I think that fingering weight on a six in general is too loose, um, and garter stitch is definitely too loose. If I want it open, I will knit lace. I want garter stitch, I want squishy garter stitch. So I uh, drop down to a five, no questions asked, um, and it was perfect. Which is why, in part, I used a little less yardage than the pattern originally called for, or estimated, because Smaller needle, smaller gauge. I don't know what my gauge is. I didn't measure it. I could, I suppose, but I'm not. Sorry. I... So I was totally lost my train of thought. Oh, colors. Okay, let me talk about colors. So if you have not yet knit this pattern or downloaded it, you get a color guide kind of in the introduction portion, which the pattern's been consolidated now and I have not updated mine. But you get a guide for what types of colors to use, you know, darks, lights, speckles, so on and so forth. Um, I basically followed the guidelines. When, depending on your color palette, and I've seen this work opposite of what I'm going to say, but I do really like color one, which was my white peppercorn, which is this twisted ribbing here, to be a neutral. Because when you're doing these big bold stripes, color one is separating them all. So here, here, and so forth. And I think that being a neutral, a light neutral really helps break it apart and ties it all together. Um, I would say, and this is echoed in the pattern, that colors two, which is my oyster, and five, which is my cumin, should be about the same in value, so light to dark, with color five being a smidge darker if it comes to it. Um, but definitely not as dark as color four, which is your darkest. Um, but I like how it's kind of dark, a little lighter, dark, light, light. Um, color three is the one she recommends as a variegated or a speckle if you're gonna do that. I'm glad I didn't. Um, I love speckles and variegated and all of that, but I think a lot of the, and this is everybody, this is just my opinion, but I think a lot of the projects that used a speckle just ended up being a little busy. Um, and so I'm really glad I went with a solid and would do that again for sure. Um, and that should be, I think, on the lighter or the 
darker side. Um, if you want the overall appearance of your wrap to be lighter, then put it on the lighter side. If you want the overall wrap to be darker, put it on the darker side um, of kind of like the middle. But, and then color one, of course, is your lightest. So I don't know if any of that actually makes sense, but that's my two cents worth. Um, I'm just going to keep talking about this project because I love it. Um, I did do modifications. Um, which will probably only matter if you're actually knitting it, but, um, on this twisted ribbing section, so, hang on, let me back up. You knit two symmetrical pieces, and then you join them in the middle, and it makes a big rectangle. Um, so you're knitting two pieces that are exactly the same. So I because I started late, elected to knit one whole piece to completion and then go back and do the other. And between piece one and piece two, I did make some changes. So that's kind of how that shook out. But, and then I went back and frogged and re -knit. Um, But so this twisted ribbing section in color one, I added two rows of twisted rib to it, which isn't much, but I felt that as written, it was just a little short and it's a pain in the butt to do but it's worth it, I think, and I wanted it to match the length of the other sections a little bit better. And then at the end of the twisted rib, it called for just a garter ridge, and I thought that was weird because we've been doing this color one eyelet separator um, for a while, and I really liked it. And even though this is color one and that's color one, I felt like it should be there. So I just added that on per how the other ones were written. Um, and all of these details are on my project page as well. Um, and then on the lace. So this pattern does give options if you don't want to do any lace, but I did, because duh. Um, there was an extra two rows of stockinette at the end of the chart, or like in the chart, and I thought they just looked kind of weird. It just was like these extra couple rows um, up here after you close off these points. So I took them out. So I ended the lace chart two rows early. So I ended on the pearl row right after the triangles or the points were closed. And I like that look a lot better. And then it did not call for an eyelet stripe here. And I thought it was weird to not have any division between these two. So I put that in. Um, I did have to shift the repeat from all of the previous ones to get it to stay aligned because the lace kind of throws that off, but it was easy. It's all written. It's just the same thing, but instead of, you know, your repeat being this, it's like this. I don't know if that makes sense. Probably not. And then on this last stripe of color four, so this is the last portion before you join. It called for four rows of eyelets. I don't know if you can see. Maybe, maybe not. The pattern called for four rows of eyelets, and I decided, yeah, you can't really see that at all. Um, I decided that three was plenty, because otherwise it was a really, really bold stripe, and I thought it was just too much. So I did three. Um, my biggest change was the joining triangles. So, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to have to put this, oh, that's a terrible look. Okay. Let me see if I can do this. So this here is all one piece up to the point, and then the other piece is here. And then you pick, or you're not picking up stitches, but you're taking live stitches from both pieces, and you're knitting this whole triangle portion and decreasing down. And you're doing that on both sides, and that's what makes your rectangle. So I decided that if this wrap was not going to get put together the way it was, um, which is how I was thinking that I was going to do this anyways. So I just did it. Um, but it was put together how I expected, though this portion was a different pattern. So Hohe has it written almost like a fade. Um, and I don't know exactly what order the colors go in, but it was basically a fade with like an eyelet stripe thrown in there at some point. And I didn't really love that. Um, because, in part because I don't like this fading business unless there are speckles involved. Then, rock on. 
And because, more importantly, because we didn't have anything like that in the rest of the wrap, that it seems kind of weird to all of a sudden be putting in these two row garter stripes. So I decided, since the stitch counts were almost the same as what you ended with the beginning triangles, to just reverse engineer the triangles and plug them back in. Um, and so even though the beginning triangles were knit like a top-down triangular shawl from here down, I knit this one the other way, decreasing along the center part and along the edges. Um, and I really love how it turned out. There was some frogging involved to get things to line up to look like the original triangles, but it worked out really nicely. The only major changes I made patterning-wise from the beginning is that um, in the beginning, I had a blue eyelid stripe in between the pink and my lace was green, and I swapped that on, the, on here. So my eyelet ridges were green and my lace was blue. And that was because I didn't like having it be blue, pink, blue. So I went blue, pink, green. Um, I also didn't switch back to color one at the beginning just because it was like too tiny. Um, but I wrote up how I did this whole triangle. Um, I did not write it down on my project page because I thought it it gave a little too much away in terms of construction because I used the the same, um, I don't know what the word is, same decrease structure as the pattern, um, same joining, same all of that. I just used a different patterning in between kind of. Um, so if you are knitting this wrap and you are interested in what I did, please PM me on Ravelry and I will be happy to send that along, but I didn't necessarily want it all up there. And it was a lot, like my project page is already long enough as it is, I didn't need to put a whole thing in there. Because typed up in Word, it's like four pages, plus the chart for the lace, so. Um, but if you are interested, I am happy to send it along, so. Now that I've talked for about 20 minutes about this thing, I think we're good. Um, but so that's my finished object. I finished it about four days ago, and then I blocked it couple days ago, got pictures yesterday, spammed Instagram like cray, not, well, trying to put mad and crazy together does not work, like crazy, and I'm in love, I'm in love, um, it is longer than I am tall, but that's okay, because it wraps it around my shoulders perfectly, um, for blocking, I did use wires along the long edges, I should have on the short edges as well, but I was lazy, and I originally steam blocked it, and that probably would have been sufficient, but I ended up having the time, so I spray blocked it. Um, I did not wet block it because I had seen one that was wet blocked, and it was ginormous. And I did not want this to be ginormous. It's huge as it is. Um, and I did not want to lose the squishy garter, which can happen when you wet block garter. It just kind of it flattens out. Um, there's nothing in and of that that I don't like. I just squishy. Um, and while I don't generally have a problem with Miss Babs yarns bleeding, um, I had not pre-washed the denim and I just didn't know how that was going to react. Um, so eventually it's going to have to get washed at some point in time and I'll deal with that then. But until then, I have my giant wrap. And when Hokey says that this could be used as a blanket, she is not kidding. Because mine is almost two feet wide. And I could see if I was just like on an airplane. So I would never actually wear a blanket like this. But I, you could. Um, I just wrap my shoulders up. Um, or my lap. But you could use it as a small blanket if you wanted. So that is my finished object. Um, my only finished object. Because this, I mean, I knit on this thing exclusively for three and a half weeks. Um... That's all I thought about, that's all I did. That was, that was that. So next up is one of my works in progress that's living in my blue field bag. Um, it was living in my natural bag until I started the starting point and because I got a color coordinate and all that, starting point went in the natural. 
and this one in the blue, and it may stay here. Um, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but, you know, coordination, guys. So this is my Lindisfarne, wrapped by Lucy Hag, or Hog, or something else, H-A-G-U-E. Um, and this is a giant cabled wrap that I will only ever wear on St. Patrick's Day. But here's what it looks like so far. And by looks like, I mean it's all bunched up on the needles. You can't really tell. Um, let me show you the cables. So I am just over two-thirds of the way into this. Get closer. You can see all the cables. Um, I'm about two-thirds of the way in, so this, you can't talk if you have knitting in your mouth, um, this first row of cables I am doing again up, up, at the, up here, but it's flipped, it's mirrored, so um, that's what that looks like so far. Last time I podcasted, it was down probably right around here, so I've knit all of that. Um, this wrap is going to be a rectangle, um, but it is so clever. Uh, I went on about how clever it was last time, but it is steaked. So this is my steak, and this will become the fringe when I'm done. Uh, and that way, I mean, there's a lot of purling in this, but that way you don't have to purl back and cable on the back on the wrong side. Um, so you, it keeps your right side facing you the whole time. Um, and it's on a background of reverse stockinette. No, garter. Two-color garter. That's what all of this is. Because um, you're purling around and knitting around um, for the background. So I'm in love with it. It's pretty crazy. But I think it'll be really worth it when it's finished. So my yarn. Um, I am knitting this out of Neighborhood Fiber Company Rustic Fingering, which is probably not the best choice of yarn for this because it's a single ply, but I don't care. Um, I'm knitting it out of Fells Point, which is the green, obviously, obviously. Um, and it's got some really wonderful yellowy bits. Um, I don't think this is picking up all the variation, but it's beautiful. Um, so I'm knitting it out of Fells Point. And Roland Park, which is natural. It's just undyed. Um, I am alternating two skeins of the green. And this one has been a goofball from the beginning. Um, and that's because I need more than one skein of the green to complete this project. And they're hand-dyed. I did not want there to be a colored jog partway through. And since it's steaked, um, I've been pretty pleased with my twisting of the colors, but if it's not perfect, it's getting cut anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so the only downside is there are three balls of yarn attached to this project, um, the two green and the white, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying this. I did put this down um, for the duration of the starting point, so it probably would have been done had I not done that, um, because I was right about here before I started my starting point. So I was most of the way through it. I was over halfway by then anyways, but it's a very slow going project. Um, there are rounds that take over an hour, but it's totally worth it. And I love it. Um, it'll be a fun piece even to just like display on a chair, which I'm not much into displaying my knitting, but this I think might be a display piece because it's so crazy otherwise. Um, but I love it. It's a lot of fun to knit. Um, if you are comfortable with cable knitting, it is doable. Um, all of the, she uses a lot of different cables in it, but once you break down what the different pieces mean, it's not very hard. 
Um, and once you kind of get the gist of how it's being done, um, it's really not bad. And it's like, I think it's 10 repeats around. I find that within a repeat or two, I've got the pattern memorized for that round. And I don't have to look back at the chart. That's just me. But, um, you know, it's very intuitive. You can see where the cables are going to cross kind of before you get there. So, yeah, I definitely highly recommend it. It's just, it's a project you have to go in knowing it's going to be a labor of love. So when I'm finished, I will, or finished with the knitting, I'll put an I-cord edge around it, cut the steak, and tie off the fringe. So that is my Linda's farm. And I'm about to lose stitches. Okay. Um, I am knitting this on size 3, which is a 3.25 millimeter needle, um, Chowgu needles. Um, you do... So 40 inch. Um, the pattern does not specify cable length. You want a 40 inch. You may even be able to get away with a 47 because I am kind of bunched on this. Um, but definitely a 40 inch. Um, you do, in my opinion, want needles that are fairly smooth because of you're kind of going in and out of the stitches with the cables. Um, Especially if you cable without a cable needle like I do. Um, I have cabled without a cable needle for the whole thing. Because that's how I roll. Um, and so smooth needles are a necessity. And pointy needles, you really, really need sharp points. Um, which these needles have. So I recommend that. Um, I'd also say I'm not one for point protectors. They're not a bad idea for this project. Um, I have not had any major incidents or mishaps, but... As you saw, it's pretty easy for the stitches to just fly off because there's so many of them. Um, so if you get a little worried about those things, point protectors are not a bad idea. But I don't have any, so that's that. But I'm enjoying the project a lot. Um, my next work in progress, I don't remember where it was the last episode, honestly. Um... And I have barely worked on it at all. I think I did put a couple rounds in at some point during my starting point, but not many. But I'll show you anyways because, and this gets into enabling and stash enhancement later, but it is now living in the cutest little sock sack. So this bag is by Birch Grove on Etsy, and she's also <clears throat> Birch Grove on Instagram. She's a Canadian bag maker, which means that this bag was like stupid cheap because of the exchange rate right now between the Canada, between the Canada, Canada and the U.S. But it has little bees on it. And I just thought it was darling. Um, and it's got these nice leather straps, or maybe they're for leather. I don't know. They're nice um, with the little bead. And it's just a little drawstring. Uh, but it's a beautiful little bag. I really love it. Um, and I would love, she's got some wonderful fabrics when she updates. And it's hard to not buy them all. Uh, and my skein has totally erupted for this project. Um, which will be really fun to put back in order. But I am knitting, let's see, untangle myself here a little bit. Not really. Um, Hermione's Everyday Socks by somebody. I don't remember. It's Hermione's Everyday Socks. They're like the most popular sock pattern ever, so you'll find them. They're free. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I should mention the other two patterns are paid for patterns on Ravelry. Um, and I am knitting this out of Madeline Tosh Twist Light, I believe. It's the one with nylon, which is a fingering weight yarn, and I'm knitting it in the Cosmic Wonder Dust colorway, which is a rainbow speckle. Neon-y rainbow speckle. Um, and I, this is one of my little progress keepers, which should totally be on my other project, but it, sorry, my needle's right on the computer. It's a little four-leaf clover. 
Um, I'm through the heel. I decided on this one to do a mini heel flap and gusset with a short row heel or a fish lips kiss heel. I don't know if we can see that, but if you see this little triangle right here, that is my little mini heel flap. And then my fish lips kiss heel. I decided to keep the traditional slip stitch pattern throughout the fish lips kiss heel, and it actually worked. And I kind of like it. So, that is that. Um, I decided to work on Linda's Farm before I finish these because these do make a good travel project if I am out and about. Um, so I do want to get them done before I cast on a new project, but I decided that Linda's Farm was a better one because I can work on that at home. Um, but yeah, that's that. And I am knitting these on 1.5, um, US 1.5, which is a 2.5 millimeter needle. And I am knitting them on Chowgu mini twist mini needles, interchangeable needles. And I don't remember if I had these the last episode. I think I did. Um, but it's the same cord as the heavier Chowgus, like on my Linda's farm, but it's thinner and it's like super flexible. So they took a cable that's already amazing and made it better. Um, so I'm really enjoying this cable. Um, I still love my double points for socks, but I see myself magic looping with this. I mean, I've done it so far. Um, I did get a little fumbly when it came to the whole heel gusset thing, because I haven't done that on magic loop in forever. But I really enjoy it. Um, I don't know if it's any faster or slower for me, but I think it's really great. Um, and I can see myself doing it either when I'm traveling. So I have a thing about going to the airport with double points because I've, I've done it a million times, but I'm afraid now that I will drop a double point. Um, so I can see it for that and I can see it for more vanilla patterns or things like this that are very simple because these are the kind of patterns I get ladders on or like there's some kind of bridge which I don't get on a pattern sock or like a heavily patterned sock so I think that's the way to go for like more vanilla type patterns or things that are more stockinette based so um, and I'm going to go talk about needles a little later on this is going to be a long episode guys that's what happens when you don't record for a while um so that is what I have for works in progress. If you recall last time I was working on a crocheted shawl, the Zerka shawl. Um, I haven't touched it since then. Um, and I'm actually kind of on the fence about what to do with it. I really like the yarn pattern combo, but I think I was trying to alternate skeins on it and I am not sold that that was a good decision in the sense of carrying the yarn because it's crochet and I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, so I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. And I don't want to leave it languishing if I'm not going to finish it. Even if I want to use that yarn and pattern together again in the future, I just want to rip it out. So I think that's probably what's going to happen, unfortunately. But it was good to get, it got the crochet bug out of me. So that's, I guess that's good. Um, but that's what I have for works in progress. I want to cast on everything, but I can't because I have stuff on the needles. Um. And having three things, three to four things active was like too, was too much as a monogamous knitter. So it feels good. I'm just like, just remember, you have to work everything down and then you can cast on. So we're getting there slowly but surely. I forgot how bubbly that is. It's ginger ale. Woo. Um... Again, I don't remember where this was the last episode, but I do have some cross stitch. Um, so this is my heaven and earth designs. And I know it doesn't look like anything. But it is going to be, or it's based off of a watercolor flower painting. 
And I am still on page one, obviously. Um, I haven't done that much since the last episode, but I have done some. Um, particularly down in here um, and some more along this edge. I don't remember. But it's coming along. Um, I'm kind of itching to pick my cross stitch up again. Um, again, I put everything down when starting point started. So I'm kind of ready to pick this back up, give it some more love, give it some more love, and give my Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery stuff some love. Because I haven't done much with those lately. And I think since I started stitching their patterns, I've done a lot of them over the summer. And there's just kind of, even though it's only been the past couple years, some nostalgia. And I do a lot of cross stitch, or I did a lot of cross stitch when I was a kid in the summer. And it's just a summer craft for me. And so I'm looking forward to picking that back up. But at the same time, I know I would usually pick that back up because it was too hot to knit. And since it is not too hot to knit, I'm knitting. So, I don't know. But that is that. So this is Heaven and Earth Designs. It's called Poppies by Joe Lynch. So, um, I'm, yeah, slowly but surely cruising along. All right, so sorry that cut out. My brother walked in and I wasn't expecting that and it just scared me. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's where I am for cross stitch right now. Um, I have no spinning, but Tour de Fleece, which is a spinning event that has no prices per se, um, that co corresponds with Tour de France starts on Saturday. Um, certain groups that are hosting teams will give away prizes if you meet their rules, but there is no like, Tour de Fleece giveaway, to my knowledge. I think there used to be. I don't remember. I haven't checked. Um, but long story short is I may be participating this year, but I am still on the fence. So there may be some spinning coming. There might not. I don't know. I should, but I don't know. So let me jump into Sash Enhancement. And some of the stuff is upstairs, but it's little stuff, so it's okay. Yeah, and then we'll jump into kind of what else I wanted to talk about. Um, so I made, let me see where I put it. Uh, the month of May was mostly a notions purchase month for me. I got this bag. Um, and I got some stitch markers from Nitty by Nature. And I've. The little shamrock that was on my socks is also from her. Um, I got, which are upstairs, a bee progress keeper and a honeycomb progress keeper. Um, I already have the bee stitch marker from her. It's exactly the same charm, but that was a stitch marker and I wanted a progress keeper. So I got that. Um, and then the other one that I have not used yet is just this little glass bead um and then she hooked all of them on with one of the bulb stitch markers with some beads on it so it's like another stitch marker um and what i love her stitch markers are usually just a couple bucks a piece um, so they're very affordable um and i got them when she had a sale going so that was that um there are about a million stitch markers or progress keepers I could buy right now, which is so weird because I always said I would never be someone who would bought those things, but here I am. Um, and then I bought a fair number, and I don't remember if I showed these last time. If I did, I'm sorry, but I probably got more since then. Um, the mini twist interchangeables that I'm knitting my sock on, I ended up kind of liking. So I went and bought more pieces, and I don't remember entirely which pieces came from where, but I purchased, made two separate orders. One was from, I believe it was handsomefibers.com, and the other was from You So and So, which is the bag maker that I used that are not my field bags. Um, she was no longer going to be stocking, I think, any needles in her shop, and put all the remaining stock on sale for like half off or something ridiculous. And so there were just odd sizes here or there, but I picked up some more of the interchangeable pieces that she still had in stock. So in total, I have, so I've got my sock on a, 
22 inch cable, which makes a 32 inch needle because the tips are five inches. Um, and so the way that these are labeled for sizes is it does not include the tip length. So this one says it's a 22 inch cable to make and then add your tip length. So add 10 inches to that. Um, and as you can see also below the 22, it says mini. That's how you know that these are for the mini interchangeables where the, it's the thin cord. So I have now two cables for Magic Loop. Um, and then I bought two more cables that are 37 inches. Um, yeah, so I have two of these. And this is because I read that somebody successfully hacked their Diet Craft interchangeable cables with these. And they love them, um, which would be like my match in heaven. So I got a couple of these to try that, and I just haven't done it yet. So the 37 inch, I think I did it so, cause I could get, I forget how I do it, but I think I could get three cables out of these two. One would become a 40 inch needle. And I think one would become a 24 and a 32 maybe. I don't remember. I figured it out. I have to just go back and do the math, but um, yeah, because these are 37 inches each. I don't remember. But when I do that, eventually I will keep you guys updated on that progress. Um, and if it doesn't work, these only cost me a couple bucks. So uh, it's not a big deal. And with the way the Diet Craft cables for their interchangeables are constructed, if it doesn't work, I can just put the cables back in and it won't be a problem. And then I got some needle tips. Um, so I have the US 1.5 in progress. So I got US 1. Um, and the mini tips. So the mini tips are what work with the mini cables. Um, but the mini tips only go up to a US 1.5. Starting at US 2, they go up to their small size. Um, they have three different chunks of sizes for their interchangeables, the mini, the small, and the large, depending on the needle size. And that just makes it so that your cable and the join is at least sort of close to the needle size. So the two is a small connector size. Um, so I got a two, a US two, which is a 2.75 millimeter, and a US three, which is a 3.25 millimeter needle. So I got both of those. Um, the two is for socks, most likely. The three is for another Lucy Hag shawl that you do in the round. Well. You do parts of it in the round, and I was not going to uh, double point that, so magic with it. Um, but these two sets of tips will not fit on these wonderful cables without adapters. So I got the um, small to mini adapters, which are very tiny, you can see. And they just screw into the bottom of my tips and then screw into the cables. So um, they were like a couple bucks, if that. So if I, what I might do, if I decide that these cables are the way to go and I want to keep building a set like this, is I will get a set of adapters for every pair of tips and just leave them screwed on. They add not even a quarter of an inch to the length of your needle tip, maybe a quarter of an inch, I don't know. They don't add that much in your needle tip length, so um, I think they're awesome. So those are kind of all of the little pieces that I got. I did also pick up in one of these purchases just a set of US1 double points um, because they're really inexpensive of the Chagus, and I do like these a lot. Um, there were no other sizes, I think, in stock, so ones it was, and I needed ones. Need. All right, um, I did get a little yarn because I went to Fiber Space about a week and a half ago to meet up with Denise, one of my friends who I worked with there, and I was pretty good. I didn't get too much. I did get a skein of Cascade Yarns Eco Plus. 
I have no clue if that is accurate. Mm. That's not accurate either. It's purple. It is color 2450, which came up as mystic purple. And it's kind of a mid-tone purple. I don't know. Um, but I got a skein of it because Fiber Space is no longer carrying this yarn. And it was like 30% off. So, yeah, grab that. So it'll be a big shawl of some kind, eventually. And then I got, I've been meaning to try this since I heard it was coming out. And by try, I mean own for now. But I got some Wolf Folk Luft, which is their newest base. Um, it is a bulky weight um, base from them. And what's interesting, you can't really tell on this color. So this is color L1, which is their, like, white, basically. Their lightest color. But you can tell more on color L5, which is their blue, um, the construction of it. So let me see if I can hold it up close. So you see that lighter bit that's a chain? It's actually a little tube of cotton that they then blow the wool fibers into. So the chain is, I think they're always this whitish color. And then your fiber is what's dyed. And so the chain is organic Pima cotton, and it makes up about 45% of the yarn, and then 55% of the merino that Wolf Oak is known for. So it's not as soft as like Wolf Oak Far, which is, oh my goodness, but it's still soft, it's squishy. And I really love the construction because when it knits up, it just has this cool, like, warm denim look. It's so cool. Ugh. So um, there were some swatches in the shop, just seed stitch. And it was the most beautiful thing ever. So I got two skeins of each, and they are going to go into a herringbone cowl. Um, and I'm really excited to knit with it because I think it's, it's really cool. It's listed as a bulky weight. I don't know if it's a bulky weight. It might be more like an Aran weight. I don't know. Let me... That's what it looks like size-wise. Um, but it's very, very light. And it's kind of marketed as the way to have a wool folk or a wool sweater for that matter in warmer weather. Maybe not 90 degree weather that Virginia is used to typically having. But, you know, 70 something degrees, you want still to have a sweater or a top this little, you know, little something, but it's not hot, too hot, and they market this as the way to go. We'll see. I don't know about those claims, but it's a beautiful yarn, and I'm excited to know with it. It's kind of the long story short. So I got two skeins each of that, um, and then I got a Haya Haya 32-inch US 15 to knit that herringbone cowl on. Chow goos do not come in 15s, so which Hyas are a great needle. Um, they're just a little slicker than I like. And the Hyas Sharps don't even come in 15, so I need a regular Hyas, but it's okay. Um, so that's what I have for enabling for this week. Um, I wanted to do a quick, I don't know if it's quick and dirty, but a pretty unorganized needle review. Thoughts on my needles? Um, and kind of the needles that I use and what I like and what I don't necessarily like and how I organize them. Because um, I thought that might be kind of beneficial. So first up, um, my main set of needles are my Diet Craft interchangeables. Which the wood needles, which is what these are, are unfortunately no longer made. Because the supplier that Diet Craft used burned down a few years ago. Um, you can still get... They do have, they are making individual tips out of their leftovers, uh, but you cannot order full set the way you used to be able to. Um, so this is what my needles look like. Um, and this set comes in four to 10.5. They do make metal needles, which I would like to try. Um, I think they're, I think the finish is a lot like a chowgu from what I gather. And those go down to a three, and they may go larger. I don't know. Um, but they're like an anodized, anodized aluminum. 
Um, I love the needle tips. I love that they're handmade. I love that they're awesome. I don't like the cables um, because they have lots of memory. I have tried boiling them, steaming them, does not work. Um, which is funny because somebody else I know who has these needles loves the cables. So I'm thinking, I know at some point they changed the material. I don't know if the newer material is better. I think it is. But this material is terrible. Which is why I'm going to hack it with my Chowgu cables. But the connectors are great. The join is great. Um, and that won't be affected what we're, um, with, if I change my cable. So that is what I use most of the time. And that lives when I actually tie it up in this little case that came with the set. And because I was good after my starting point, I put my tips back in here. I use these needles to knit my starting point. Um, because they don't come in a three, I did have to buy a needle for my Lindis farm. Um, and I bought a Chagu. And I didn't really want interchangeables for that anyways. I don't have a big problem with my diet crafts unscrewing, but it happens every once in a while. It's going to happen to everybody regardless. So I just didn't want it happening, but I can usually tell as soon as it happens. I've never had the needle tip totally unscrew off the cable when knitting. So um, usually just a good tighten, tight tug or tight twist and they're good. Um, my circulars, so I do have a fair number of 16 inch circulars because my diet craft do not make a 16 inch. Um, and then some other odd needles here, there. Um, like I have some 24 inch 1.5 chow goos for two at a time circular sock knitting. Um, I have a 32 inch three for some reason, probably for shawls or something. 32 inch four for shawls. I think I have a six as well for shawls. It's probably what this needle is. Maybe. Yeah, I have a six 32 inch for shawls as well. Um, but all of these are stored in this accordion case from Chicken Boots. Um, and it does need to be organized. Um, I originally had a size in every slot and now it's just kind of like needles are shoved places and poking out the sides, which is not normal. Tuck them in a little better, but it's this great accordion case with an elastic button closure and it keeps everything tucked in. It's quite slim. Um, I don't have tons and tons of circulars, so one case is sufficient for me. Um, and I got this off their website. You cannot get the butterflies anymore, but you can get a lot of great fabrics. Um, their cases are pricey, but I think they're worth it at the same time because my stuff's not going to fall out of this. Like, there's no way. They're not even, like, nothing is budging. So it's a great set or a great case. Um, so that's what I have stored or how I store my circulars, my fixed circulars. Um, I do prefer, I guess going back into what my needles actually are, I do prefer the Chagus for my fixed circulars. Um, for both 16 inch and longer. Um, I do have the occasional high high sharp, like this one. Um, and yeah, some other random things. But I prefer the Chowgoos over the highs. Um, and that's because, I mean, the highs have a great cord. Um, it's not, it's more flexible than the regular Chowgu cord, not as flexible as the Chowgu mini cord. Um, but I have the problem, and I have this generally with 16 inch circs, is I get a little bend here with the cable. And I find that the high is, because of the cable material, let me bend them there. Whereas the Chagus resist it a little bit more. Um, I also find, so I'm gonna knit with high sharps if I'm gonna knit, um, cause I like pointy tips, but these are really pointy, like weapon pointy. Um, so if you like really, really pointy tips, the high sharps are the way to go. Um, but they, these are a nickel plated finish, which is really slick. And I generally just don't do that slick. I like smooth, 
um, but they're a little slicker than I like, which is why I prefer the Chow Goos. Um, their cable is a little heftier and it's not as flexible and I like that because I feel like it's sturdy. It has no memory and it um, kind of, I know it's going to hold up, uh, basically I guess is what I'm saying. It also, these tips aren't as sharp as Haya Sharps, they are darn pointy. Um, I would not want to get poked with these. And they are, they're still very smooth, but it's more of like a brushed finish, so they're not as slippery, um, which is what I like. And they also laser print the size. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Mm. You can kind of see it right there. Maybe, maybe not. But the size is laser printed on, so it's never going to come off. Um, but you always know what size you have. So, and then I have a very old set of Clover Takumi 16-inch Cirques, which are just kind of terrible. Um, they're very dull. The cable is stiff, but filled with memory. I don't like it, but I own it, and if I ever need an 11 inch, 16 inch, or 11, US 11, 16 inch shark, I have it. But I bought it for a project many moons ago. Uh, so, yes, long story short, I like Chow Goose. Which brings me to my double points. Um, I store my double points again in a chicken boots case, um, and what's nice with the double point case is it comes with kind of like a built in notions pouch on the side and so you can store whatever you want in this clear pouch. Um, this case is in desperate need of being refilled because a lot of things are missing. Um, and a lot of what's in here I don't actually use. But here's what the inside looks like. So you have lots of rows of pockets, and the pockets um, are elastic to help hold your needles in. And they do start off a little smaller on one end and get bigger on the other end. Um, and then you've got this uh, vinyl flap that comes down to kind of keep everything in place, which you then close like a book and zip up around. Um, as you can see, most of the needles in here are bamboo, which is what I knit with for a very long time for my socks. Um, and they were almost exclusively, well, most of them were the Clover Takumis, which were great until I started snapping them all. They would bend, which I didn't mind having a slight bend in my needle because it just conformed to my hands. Um, the tips aren't great. Um, but my issue was that I kept snapping traditional bamboo double points, particularly in size one. Um, though I do have some, I think these are Haya bamboos. They're a little better. And I have a set of Sunstruck needles from Knit Picks, which are also a little better. Um, Sunstruck needles are very much like the Diet Craft and Material. Um, so they're a little bit stiffer. Um, but what I, they're all still wood, they all still break. Um, I prefer wood, I like my wood needles, but for socks it was getting frustrating. So that's when I transitioned into metal. Um, I have some of the metal needles from Knit Picks, which are nice and pointy and slippery, um, but they have like no give to them which hurts my hands. Um, I have some of the Chowgu double points, which I do like. Again, there isn't much give to them, but they have nice points um, and they're smooth. So I do use those a lot um, for double points, which is why I got another set. So I guess right now my favorite double point is probably a Chowgu. 
Um, I would like to try signatures, and I nearly bought some last night because they were having a sale that ended yesterday. But I just couldn't couldn't do the price right now. Um, I think when I get my feet settled a little more, it won't be such a big deal. But um, they, I hear they're wonderful needles, so I would like to try those as well. Um, I guess my favorites are Chow Goose aside from my Diet Craft needles, which, again, they're wood, so they're not made anymore. Um, I wish I had more of these. But they're wonderful needles, so I use those a lot as well for my double points. So, quick and dirty, if I can't have my Diet Crafts, my Chow Goos will take me a very long way. This is a little cover from Chicken Boots. I don't believe these are made anymore. I have two of them, one for six inch circs and one for seven to eight inch. Um, and they just are elastic and hook over needles. And sometimes they hook over two sets when you don't have a stock in progress. Um, so that's quick and dirty. If you have any questions about needles and what I use and what I like, let me know. Um, but basically I want sharp pointy tips. I want cables that are sturdy and don't have memory, um, unless I'm magic looping, then I want them really flexible. And I want the needle slick, but not super, super shiny. Um, so lastly, let me just go into how life stuff, if you're, in, if you're not interested. Actually, I have one more thing. Yeah. So I'm going to start in it along. Um, I don't know if I'm actually going to participate. Actually, I will because I have a whip. Um, I'm going to do a speckled summer knit along. So even though it is, let's see, maybe because it's the end of June, um, I'm going to have the official start date kind of backtrack it and have it be the summer solstice, which was last week, and have it go until the fall equinox. Um, and it's going to be a speckled summer so any projects that you finish in that time period, regardless of when they were started, that use a speckled yarn are eligible. And I will do like a pattern giveaway unless anybody wants to donate yarn or anything, which don't feel that you have to, but um, I'll do like a pattern giveaway or two, um, depending on how many entries we have. So any speckled project you can enter. I'll make a thread in the Ravelry group, um, and then I'll do some kind of random number generator to draw that at the end. Um, I will say that you do need to be a member of the group um, on Ravelry, and our group is called the Woolly Bee Podcast. It's very quiet because I am the world's laziest podcaster. Um, but please do join the group, and feel free to post any questions there or whatever. Um, so that will be where that is, um, and I'll have some kind of FO thread that you can post in. Um, anything that speckled counts, please... Use your best judgment, but it does need to be speckled, not variegated, speckled, which are little individual blips of color um, that are different than the background. So like my socks were a natural background with speckles of color. However, that is done. Um, speckles are hot. Hashtag speckles are hot right now. So you can find a lot of speckled yarns out there um, of all price ranges. So if you... Are worried about that there are plenty but let's do a speckled summer i love speckles um so anything you finish from the summer solstice which what was that the 22nd maybe let me see uh, 17. this is it was last wednesday the 21st so any project finished between uh 21st and September 21st, because it's the last day of summer. Um, so June 21st to September 21st, three whole months. Any speckled projects finished within that time period, regardless of when they were started, will count. Um, they do need to be completed projects. So if you're going to knit socks, it does need to be a pair of socks. Um, if you knit mittens, it does need to be a pair of mittens. I do want the projects finished. Um, but other than that, it's a pretty open, easy cow. Double dip with every other knit along that you're part of, and I hope to see some finished objects. 
So now that is the last nitty type thing I'm going to talk about. If you aren't interested in life, um, I will see you next time, whenever that may be. And if you are, we'll jump in. Um, so last time we talked, it was before I started a summer class. And that class was basically terrible. Um, it was just really stupid. And I won't bore you with the details, but it was a waste of three weeks. But. I did get to stay for the last week with a, she was actually my mentor teacher this past year, but basically a friend stayed with her. We got to knit, eat. I got to hang out with her puppies, which they're dogs, but puppies, her horses, and we had a really good time. So I got home from that at the beginning of June, and then I did some substitute work at the local elementary school for a week, which was fun. Just kind of playing with kids all week. Um... And then I just had some time to relax. Um, I also have found my apartment for the fall once I start my new job. So that'll be really exciting. Um, I'll be moving that, moving in in August. But I'm excited to have my own space. It's going to be small. I don't know where the yard's going to fit, but it'll be good. Um, other than that, I've just got together with friends, gone to a baseball game, done some stuff like that. Um, just a lot of hanging out, a lot of knitting. And all that good stuff. So nothing too exciting, but it's been good. Um, so I guess life wasn't that long this time. But that's kind of all I have for that. Um, until next time, I hope you guys knit away, craft away. If you have any questions at all, please PM me on Ravelry. Um, please remember to join the group and subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, which the link is down there. Um, I still have no show notes, show notes but again, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, and I want to see your speckled projects. Um, I don't know the next episode, but I can say in about a month, three weeks to a month, I'm going to be doing Operation Organize the Stash. I had a funny name for it. I don't remember what it was, though. But I'm going to be organizing my entire stash. And I'm going to hopefully get some clips of my process and how I'm doing that and how I'm organizing to either make that its own video or put that at the end of another video. But until next time, happy knitting, happy summer, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.